Hey, this is Chris Plush from CG Masters, and in this tutorial, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of some probably lesser known hotkeys that you might find really useful. And toward the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to set up your own hotkey as well, and we're going to do that for a tool called Auto Merge. So first, we're going to start off with some modeling tool tips. So here we have a car door as our subject, and I'm going to go into edit mode. And for whatever reason, let's say we got a big end gun right here that we want to connect the edges for. So let me select those two vertices, and I'll press the J key to create an edge between them. And then I'll select these two and press J again, and it creates an edge, but it also puts a vertex between any, any edges that it intersects. So we can even do that diagonally like that, and you'll see it places vertices where they're needed. And now let's pretend that for some stupid reason I want to create an air intake hole on the door. So let me select those two vertices, and I'll press the V key to rip it away from the surface like that, and it creates a hole for us like that. Let me undo that, and let's say I just want to create sort of a bump kind of detail there. So I'll press Alt and V, and it'll basically rip it away from the surface, but also create faces there instead of the gap. So now we can press Control and R to add extra edge loops around that. And we got a nice uh, random detail there. I don't know. Whatever. Now I'll show you the bend tool. So let me go into side view. And the bend tool relies on the position of the 3D cursor. So I'm going to left click right there to place the cursor there. Then I'll select all the vertices, and I'll press Shift and W for the bend tool. You can see it's just basically warping it around the 3D cursor. And how far away your mouse is from the 3D cursor acts like the fall off. If we have it close to the 3D cursor, there's no bending, it's just rotating. But the further we move that out, the more vertices are going to be affected by it. So I'll just bend it up to there. Now we have this pretty interesting looking door, actually. And now let's say someone throws a baseball at our door here and it creates a dent. So let me go into edit mode, and let me select these four vertices here, and I'll press Alt and P for the, the poke tool, and it creates a vertex in the middle. Now we can just select that vertex, move it backward, and we have our dent. All right, let's say we got the dent fixed and we want to get rid of this vertex. We can press the hotkey Control and X to dissolve it. So now let's say I want to space these edge loops out a little bit more consistently. So what I'll do is hold Alt and right click on that edge there to select the whole edge loop, and then I'll press G twice to slide that right into the middle there and space things out better. And now a selection hot tool that I often forget exists. You can hold Control and Shift and right click on things to, to path select. For example, if I selected that vertex and I wanted to select all the vertices between that one and this one here, I'll hold Control, Shift, and then right click on it. And it selects the whole region. It works with just edges as well. So if I select that vertex and I'll select all the vertices along this edge up to here, I'll hold Control, Shift, and right click on it. Now let me go to my second layer where I have a cube here. I'll show you one last hotkey for mesh editing. So I'll go in edit mode of this. I'll select all the vertices. And let's say we want this to be slanted. I'm going to use the shear tool to do that. So the hotkey for that is Control, Alt, Shift, and S. And that will slant it for me. So now I have an architecture file loaded up. And let's say I want to actually walk through this house to make sure everything looks good. Well, we can activate something called fly mode by pressing Shift and F. And you're probably aware of this function already, but it also has a lot of different options as well. And you can see all those options in the header of the 3D view. So let's try pressing tab to turn on gravity. That's going to enable collisions with the ground and everything around us. So it's going to keep us at eye level as we walk through this place. So now we just use the WASD keys. And let's hop on over this ledge, do a little parkour. And we'll go down the stairs. So now I'm just exploring the house, making sure everything looks right. And let's head on into the bedroom. And let's say I want to get a good view of this room set up. So I'll, I'll bring my camera right into the corner there and get the perfect shot going. And then I can either right click to reset the view back to the top floor, or I can left click to confirm the view. So this is our view now. And now let's say I want to place the camera exactly in this view. Well, I can press the, the hotkey Control, Alt, and Numpad 0. And it'll take the active camera in the scene, and it moves it into the position that your view was. So let's say I pull this dresser into local view now, and I want to change the model a little bit. Let me go into top view real quick, and I'll press R to rotate this some random degree like that. Now I'm going to press numpad 1 for front view, and this gives us the front view of the world, but let's say we wanted a perfect front view of the dresser. So with the dresser selected, I'd press shift and numpad 1, and that gives us a, perfect, a perfectly aligned front view of the dresser. And again, if I press numpad 7, it'll give us the top view of the world, but if I press shift and numpad 7, it gives us a perfectly aligned top view of the dresser. And this works when you're working with faces in edit mode as well. 
Now the last view hotkey I want to show you is Control, Alt, and Q, which will split your screen into four windows. You got your top view, front view, side view, and perspective view up there. And you can press Control, Alt, and Q to get rid of that as well. And now for some more general or random hotkeys. Let's say I want to move the origin point from here right to where the 3D cursor is. You can either go into the left menu and into the set origin menu there, or you can use the hotkey Control, Alt, Shift, and C for the set origin menu, and then just choose origin to 3D cursor. And now a random rotation hotkey. If you press R to rotate, you can press R again for trackball rotation, and this comes in handy sometimes. This works when you're in camera view as well. You can rotate or you can trackball rotate the view around, and it works with mesh editing as well. Now while we're rotating, you can also, you probably know you can also hold control to rotate in increments. And this rotates in five degree increments, so you can hold control and shift as well, and it will rotate in one degree increments. You can also hold shift without holding control, and it gives you very precise rotation like that. Now let's say I want to take this low poly bow and add a subsurf modifier to it. The hotkey to do that automatically is control and one on the number row, not the numpad. That'll add a subsurf modifier at level one for us, as you can see here. And you can also use the numbers one through five. So if I press control and three on the number row, you can see that changed it to level three in the modifier. Now let's say I wanna take these vertices and extrude them all the way up, but I wanna do it in two blender unit increments. So I'll press E to extrude, hold control and move it to the right there, and then left click. Now to repeat that last operation, I'll press the hotkey shift and R. And I'll continue doing that all the way up to give me the incremental extrusions I wanted. Now that hockey just generally repeats whatever your last action was. In this case, it was extruding by two blender units. Now, last but not least, I wanna show you how to create your own hotkey for the auto merge tool. And let me show you the auto merge tool real quick. I'm gonna go into edit mode of this scope right here. And let's say I wanna merge this vertex with that one over there to get rid of this weird triangle area. So what I would do is go down to the header of the 3D view and enable this option here to automatically merge vertices move to the same location. Now I can simply press G twice to vertex slide that all the way to the right, then left click. And as long as they're right on top of each other, they automatically merge together, leaving us with just one vertex. So this is an incredibly useful tool. I just wish there was a hotkey for it. So I made one and I'll show you how to do it too. So now let's go up into the file menu, go down to user preferences and over to the input tab. And let me center this and make it a little bit bigger. Now we need to find the correct category for our hotkey. So I guess that would be under 3D view and then mesh, so I'll expand them, and let's go to the bottom of the mesh hotkey list. And there's a button called add new, so I'll click on that, and then I'll expand that new hotkey. Now the first thing we'll do is set up the hotkey we wanna use for this. So I'll enable shift, control, alt. I'll click on that field and type in Z. So the hotkey for the auto merge toggle will be control, alt, shift, and Z. I don't think anything else has that hotkey, though I'm not entirely sure. Now in this field right here is where we're gonna put the code for the operation. And the operation we wanna do is basically just toggling a value. So what we can do is steal some code from another hotkey that has similar actions. Luckily right above this is a context toggle value hotkey we can steal from. So let me click on the arrow to expand that. And here's the code for that operation. So what I'll do is just hover the mouse over it. I'll press Control and C to copy that value. Then I will, I'll collapse that. I'll hover over this field here and press Control and V to paste it in. And you'll see it gives us these three extra value fields down here. Now we're just trying to create a simple on off toggle hotkey here. So I don't think this is exactly the right code that we need because it's giving us three options instead of just one option for the button we wanna to toggle. And I think that has to do with the suffix enum here. So I'll click on that field and I'll backspace underscore enum off of the code and then press enter. So that leaves us with just context toggle and it leaves us with one field here to paste in the code for the actual button we want to toggle. Now let's go down and hover over the auto merge button here in the header. Then right click on it and choose copy data path. Now let me press alt and tab to get back to the user preferences window. I'll hover over the attributes field and press control and V to paste it in. Now if you want to save this hotkey, make sure you click on save user settings. Now I'll make sure my mouse is hovered over the 3D view while I press control, alt, shift, and Z. And you can see that button right below the mouse there toggling on and off. Cool, so that's all there is to it. All right, so that'll do it for this tutorial. If you have any hotkeys that you are particularly fond of, let us know in the comments. A lot of the hotkeys in this video are actually things that you guys told me about on other tutorials, so thank you for that. And I'll see you around.